So it's been a while since I've done a shop my stash video and there were so many drugstore finds, or I should say things I found in my collection that were from the drugstore, some of which I love and I haven't used in a while. Some of them, I feel like I don't really know yet how I feel. So we are playing with all of those products today. We've got everything I need for an entire face of makeup. All of it is drugstore. Everything I use will be linked below as usual. Let's try on some drugstore makeup drink some coffee and hang out. It's February. I just, I'm feeling the winter blahs. I'm sure a lot of you guys are too, if it is winter where you live right now. And today happens to be one of the few sunny days. So we've already been on a little walk this morning. We might go on a walk later just to try to soak it in. Cause I was looking at the 10 day forecast and I'm like, it's like all gray days again for a while. So cheers to that, I guess. All right. Um, let me kind of pull my hair back a bit. So let's throw on vitamin C serum. This is the back on my May Love Glow Maker. I love this stuff. This and the good all vitamin C serum are my two favorites. This one is very different though because it's more liquid, but honestly it works so well under makeup because it is liquid. I love it. And then I always put it on the back of my hands. I guess I should like kind of pull everything out and see what I'm, see what I grabbed this morning. Oh yeah. Show me what you're working with. And then I'm gonna throw on a little bit of the Coco Kind polypeptide cream. This is just a moisturizer, kind of. Well, I think it was meant to be a dupe. If you saw my dupes video about this um, for the Tasha Dewey skin cream, I don't think it's a dupe for it, but I do actually just like the product underneath makeup. So, and it's of course much cheaper, but the Dewey skin cream from Tatcha is just so different, but this is still very nice and it works really well during the daytime. All right, I'm a little torn because I have two drugstore foundations that I still feel like I'm trying to figure out. So I've got the L'Oreal True Match, also have the Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint. I think I'm gonna do the Skin Tint just because it's been a while since I've tried it and I remembered liking it and I wanna double check that. I'm trying to decide. Yeah, I'd grab my e.l.f. Halo Glow, but I think that plus the Skin Tint would be too much. So I'm just gonna kind of put that to the side. I feel like tis the season for Skin Tints right now, not only because they're so popular and they're everywhere, blah, 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 but also because at least where I live, I'm not in a season where it is very like sweaty outside. So Skin Tints, I feel like lasts a really long time on the skin. Whereas sometimes in the summer, that's, I like Skin Tints, but I just know they're not necessarily gonna last as long because I'll be sweating. I'll get a little greasier than normal. I got residual, I used the e.l.f. tubing mascara, the lash extender yesterday. I was in a rush trying to wash my makeup off last night. I didn't get all the like tubey bits cause I didn't wait for the water to get hot. Anyway, uh, I'm finding those tubey bits all over my face today for sure. I definitely feel like a brush is the move. I tend to love using a sponge, but I'm just realizing more and more that with this kind of product, it just lends itself so much better. It'll stay a little more because you're not removing so much of the makeup when you're applying it. So you can still have some of that coverage, a little bit of coverage. And this definitely, I feel like has a little bit more coverage than the CoverGirl Perfector Essence I've talked a lot about recently that I'm loving. I do think this one has a little bit more coverage and they both do better with a brush for sure. Can never decide. I mean, I, I just don't love dropper bottles for foundation or skin tints, whatever but sometimes it does make the most sense just based on the formula. But I'm like, would I prefer this to just be in a squeezy tube? Would it be able to be in a squeezy tube based on that? I feel like it could, I don't know. The brush I'm using is the 101 brush from BK. I know, I think I've got, still got an active promo code if you're interested in saving a little bit of money, but um, okay. So looking at it closely, I mean, it looks pretty, right? I even had that moisturizer underneath it and I don't feel like it looks overly oily or anything like that. And it does have a little more coverage. I definitely, as I've already said, better with the brush. I liked it with the sponge, but it just, I mean, you're never gonna get the level of coverage you may want from a product that already doesn't have a ton of coverage. So I feel like it looks really pretty. This by the way says it's 24 hours. I don't know, but I do know that it looks really pretty on the skin. So. Very cool, very exciting. I'm glad I'm trying that again. I'll have to move that to my vanity. Concealer, I wanted to try again the L'Oreal True Match Radiant Serum Concealer. This I tried very recently and I'm just still deciding how I feel. This is very thin compared to, I feel like a lot of concealers that are popular right now. It's very, very thin. I'm gonna try it with my finger. Let me let it get a little tacky if it can, because 
This is definitely not a tacky concealer, so I want to see if it'll dry down a bit and be get a little bit more like grit to it. Not grit, girth. I, none of those are right. Definitely a more lightweight concealer if you're looking for that because it is so thin. I just feel like it's light. It doesn't feel heavy or cakey or anything like that. I just am not totally convinced. I don't know. I don't think this is meshing well in person with that tint. Like they're two different types of products. And you know when they, it's like almost like you can see where the oceans meet and you can kind of see that delineation where they're just not quite meshing well together. That's how I feel about this. <laughs> skin tint in this L'Oreal, which is interesting because I feel like they should mesh well because they're both lighter weight, more low key products. But yeah, I don't know. Actually, let me do this one with a brush. Okay, it looks way better with a brush. So maybe that's a big piece of it too. Like using my finger, I did not love that. Cause again, it didn't get tacky like I thought it would. So not bad, still continuing to try. If you are looking for a lightweight concealer, I think you might like it a little bit. Definitely notice a little bit of sinking into fine lines. But I feel like spring into summer, this might be a really good choice. If you hear snoring, it's Mr. Pinocchio boy, for sure. He's laying right there. He has been coming with us here and he is just not quite at home yet when we bring him to work with us. You know what I mean? Like he, he just can't quite find his comfy spots. So he's, yeah, we have a bed for him here and he's fine when we sweep in. Anyway, but he's loving, you know, we'll take him on walks around here and he is loving all the fresh different doggy smells versus at home. Okay, for brows, I, oh my gosh, I had forgotten how much I liked this, the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Brow Styling Gel. But I remembered quickly that I had to kind of wipe a little bit off before I went in just because I don't like a ton of color. But this is super, I'm gonna say lightweight again because it's not a like thick cream or anything like that. It really does feel like, gel's not quite the right word either because it doesn't feel jelly. It's, it's really odd. It's kind of an odd consistency of the actual colored product inside, but I like it. But like I said, it can get a little bit out of hand if you don't wipe it off unless that's what you're looking for. But yeah, I have the shade. I think it's a little bit warmer than I typically go, but nothing crazy. I have the shade. Soft brown, if you were curious. So I grabbed a couple of single shadows from my collection to play with. These are two of my favorites. CoverGirl, they're, well, I'm now looking at them. They're gonna look the same, but we'll swatch them too. CoverGirl Mink Vision is one that I really, really like. I also have Maybelline Nude Glow, which is very, very popular and has been for a long time. It's just that classic bronzy, glowy color. Um, for sure, here, let me get, there's a little hard pan on. There is no doubt now seeing these side by side. First of all, they're a little bit, they're slightly different. This is the CoverGirl one, that's the Maybelline. The Maybelline one was one swipe. This was like three or four, even once I got the hard pan off. So just keep in mind, I do think the Maybelline formula for the single shadow is better than the CoverGirl. Um, and Maybelline, one of their, is it like called Apricot? There's like a pinky version of this I talked about for like years. I still love, they still sell, and it's like a couple bucks that if you like more of a pinky, bronze. It is so gorgeous. Um, anyway, so let's put this on because I haven't worn this in a while. It is so reminiscent of the MAC single shadow and all that glitters. I think, I mean, this one's a little bit bronzier. That one's a little bit almost gold tinted, but it just gives that vibe where it's that single shadow look. I put it all over the lid and then just kind of buff it in with a brush. I even will sometimes go back in and get a little more for that. It feels very high quality and it's a couple dollars. I mean, you can't beat it. And in person, I feel like it catches the light and it's so dimensional. I don't know that it's being captured as well, and but but in, in, in real life, you know what I mean? In person, it just is so pretty. Gosh, this is why I love, I need to do shop my stashes at least every other month because it just reminds me of so many favorites of mine that, you know, I'm trying new stuff and it's exciting, but there are some gold mines that I have loved that I just, you know, you forget about. Yeah, I just love this so much. Okay, so like honestly, in I'm in decluttering mode right now because I'm already looking towards spring and you know, you just get that, that itch. We have decluttered so much of our house and I should say we've decluttered, but we've also organized a lot of our house. Like over the weekends, we've been using our time that way. 
and it has been such a good feeling. But in that mindset, I think I'll just go ahead and declutter this CoverGirl one because I think it's good, but the Maybelline's better and they're so similar. Like, why would I need both? So nice. Thank you guys for helping me organize my life. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the NYX Epic Wear Eyeliner Stick in Deepest Brown. I've actually been using this the past week or so, continuing to try it out. And I really liked it for truly tight lining the eye, like really getting in those lashes. It's super creamy, super dark. So when they say deepest brown, I mean it really is deep. I put it on the um, waterline. I have, I feel like it stayed pretty well. I haven't noticed a ton of transfer down. I feel like generally NYX makes a lot of good eyeliners. Like I've always liked their liquid liners. I generally have liked their Pencil liners. This reminds me of their slide on glide on pencils. I wonder if it's the same thing, just rebranded, because it's super de duper creamy. I feel like it stays really well, and that's what I remembered about that line. So, yeah, like I feel like that did such a good job. It was really, really easy. It's super dark, and it's achieving what I want generally on a daily basis, which is just a bit of darkening right there at the lash line so that the lashes look a little bit fuller and the eye looks just a little bit more defined. I know that's like the most obvious thing in the world, but I've just been realizing lately that if I wear mascara without liner, I feel like it looks weird. And the reason it looks weird to me when I look at myself in the mirror is because all I can see is the white of the skin there like around the eye. And so it just looks like this separation from my eye to the mascara and it drives me insane. And so that's, that's what it is. I like that darkness and that's why I like it in the waterline too. But again, that's my own personal thing. Then I see other people with just mascara and no liner and I'm like, they it looks perfect. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with me? So very, very cool. By the way, it is a, um, a pencil that you sharpen, but it's kind of like that plasticky. So it's not really a, I mean, I guess it's a wood pencil, but not like a traditional wood pencil. Let me show you. See what I mean? It's like that thicker, almost plasticky wood. Not that that matters, I'm just reporting it. <laughs> I also brought the Flower Beauty Forever Wear Winged Liner. I think I liked this. Was this the one that felt pretty dark and black? So we're just gonna do a little wing. I wasn't really gonna, but why not? This is the one I remember though. Like if you've been drawing for a while, I felt like I needed to kind of like recap it for a minute to revive the color. And I did feel like I would, there were parts of it that that's what it was that I couldn't get the color to come out. Oh, and then when I did, I mess it up. So I wouldn't say this is a fave. This is not something I would. There are so many better liquid liners at the drugstore. I can link my favorite below um, that just work and they're foolproof and I don't have to mess with them at all, you know? It's not terrible, but I would not buy it again. I'm realizing I don't have makeup remover wipes here at all, so these swatches are Staying for a while, I guess. All right, the mascara, I'm just excited to use this some more. I've been really enjoying the L'Oreal Panorama mascara. I have it in Blackest Black. I just, I love the way it makes my lashes look. I don't even need to comb or curl them. I just feel like it pushes them up for me. It combs through them for me. And you can build it a little bit, but it builds so quickly but it doesn't get wildly clumpy either because of the brush. Like it's just such a good new launch. It's, I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've tried a just kind of classic drugstore mascara launch that I'm like, oh yeah, gives me exactly what I want. I tend to not really like these plasticky rubbery bristle brushes over the years, but I've definitely, I feel like they've grown on me a lot in the past year. This one and then is it that other, wasn't it L'Oreal as well? Mascara in the black tube. Uh, I think it's got a similar-ish wand and they're both really good. So I'm like, maybe I do like this kind of wand. I just feel like you're more likely to poke yourself in the eye, but it comes with the territory. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like this is a one coat and you're done kind of mascara. Like, wow, 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 wow. I wanted to try some more, I mean, I know how I feel about this, but it has been quite a few months since I've even used this, the Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer in Light. This is the one I've always said is great, but it, you need a very light hand because it can get out of hand very quickly. Yeah, literally, just to do a test, I mean, it is instantly very dark. 
So I would get some and then tap it off on something and then go in and even still, you're working with a lot. It smells really good. I do wish this was a little bit cooler toned, just, I don't know, generally that's what I wish. <laughs> because it definitely can look orange on mine and that's why this has never been, I've recommended it because I think it's good, it lasts a long time, um, but you have to find a shade that works really well for you and I've never been in love with this shade. But it's really easy to move around and I think that's another reason I have liked it is that you might get a lot, but you can really easily maneuver it and adjust it even once it's on your face, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it looks really pretty, I mean, you know? You just have to, you gotta make it work for you. I have to say, I forgot I had one of these makeup eraser towels and I got it a little bit wet and those swatches came off really easily. So I guess that works. <laughs> and one of those was like that uh, liquid liner that's hard to get off and it, it came off. All right, so for blush, what did I bring? The Honest Beauty Cream Blush, I figured I would use. I love this. This is the second one of these I've had because I used to have it in like the old packaging, you know? It's just pretty easy to use again, and I just feel like it can look really pretty. Definitely can pack a punch. I typically, I was gonna say, I feel like I usually use my finger with this, but that brush worked really well, but the heat of your hand can kind of help it sink in a little bit better. Although I feel like that worked just as well. But it's definitely a cream blush that has some staying power. It's not so emollient and so because of that, it will actually stay on your skin throughout the day versus other ones I've tried that I might really like. Like NYX used to have this cream blush that I loved, but it would not stay long because it was so like almost greasy emollient, you know what I mean? But this, this will stay really well. And I just think the color is pretty. I have the shade rose pink, by the way. I, I mean, I guess this is drugstore-esque. I mean, it's a little more expensive. However, so is the drugstore now. So I don't know. <laughs> Feel like the lines are getting uh, blurred a little bit, you know? All right, so I grabbed this Physician's Formula Butter Glow Pressed Powder. I've used this a couple times. It's kind of one of those glowy finishing powders where it's not gonna completely mattify your face, but it just, it soaks up enough of the oil, adds a little bit of staying power, but still gives a little bit of glow, if you will. It's, it's unique for sure. Let me try to see if I can get a swatch of it to show you kind of what I mean. I don't know how well you can see that swatch right there. But you see, it's like a powder, but it almost has a highlighter quality to it, which when I first kind of heard of this type of product, I thought it was really odd because I was like, huh? Like, and why would you use that? But I realized the Goldilocks time to use it would be if you are already wearing maybe a lot of matte products and you wanna add the glow back in and you need to powder anyway, or you are just wanting to keep that glowy look, but you, you know like I need something though, cause like this is too greasy or it just needs to be soaked up a little bit. I think this can work really, really well. It also could be a super, super, super subtle highlight. I would not put this on your under eyes. I do not like it. I've tried it and it just looks like in the sunlight, it just looks glowy under there. I don't think in a nice way but that's just, just my opinion. I also wanted to use the Revlon Color Stay Blot setting powder on my under eye, just because it has been a while since I've used this one. I feel like I've only used it a handful of times, so. But I like, it's got that packaging where it'll close, which I really appreciate. I wish all drugstore brands were like that. So I definitely feel like, I mean, you can see it definitely mattified that area, but I think it can tend to be a little bit crepey when mixed with that concealer, but I, I still would prefer that over the way it was before I set it, because I just feel like it makes everything mesh a little bit better. I've definitely grown to appreciate, again, over the past year or two, setting the under eyes even more, because I do think I'd prefer it to look a little more mesh together than kind of almost wet looking. It might not look crepey, but it doesn't, quite, I don't know, I, does it, is any of that making any sense? So that's where I'm at with that. But yeah, I do think this is nice. I've used this on like in my T-zone and I think it's also nice. It's very lightweight. I have 001, I don't know if that's just like, cause I don't think it's like a color color. You know what I mean? I think it's pretty translucent. All right, I wanted to highlight with the Burt's Bees, the Luminizer. This I've had for so long, I think it's starting to get old. So I was kind of wanting to try it today to decide, to decide if it's just time, I think it looks fine. 
I think it looks fine. Um, but it's so pretty. I'll just tap it kind of like right there and maybe a little bit on my brow bone and then use a clean finger to kind of blend it. Try not to bring it too far down my cheek like there because I don't, I don't know, I don't need it there. But I think it can just look so pretty in certain lightings. I haven't been using highlighter a ton, but this is definitely the kind of highlighter if I am reaching for it that I have reached for. And I just love that it's obviously not gonna look powdery since it's not a powder, but it just adds that bit of glow. Mm. So pretty. For lips, I brought the NYX Lip Liner in Need Me. This is, which line is this? I actually need to, do I have a shot? I do. It's very much a classic darker nude. Um, and then I wanna try, there I've got a couple options for lip stuff. So let me kind of wipe off my lip balm and we'll go in. Very creamy lip liner for sure. Also tended to go darker here, like there, and there and not quite as dark and defined on the outer part. I just don't know that I need it so much, um, but this is one that you can really blend with your fingers. So if you've been looking for something to be like kind of undone, this is the one. This is the one because it, it'll it stay in place, but you can really, I mean, I don't even feel like I need a lip color on top of that. I love that. So this is the shade Need Me if you were looking for one. This is moving to my vanity because using it again just reminded me like, okay, yeah. It is the perfect color that I'm generally most days looking for. I wanted to put on top the e.l.f. Glow Reviver Lip Oil. It's just a favorite. This has lived in my purse a lot. It is comfy, slightly minty, works really well with this lip liner if you needed an ultimate everyday combo. I feel like that looks so pretty. And it, again, is neutral enough that it matches whatever I'm wearing, whatever I got going on. There are so many people out and about walking. It makes me so happy. So lastly, I'm gonna do the Revlon Colorstay Lock Setting Mist. Let me make sure it's not, it's a little wonky. Okay. The sprayer was not perfect. I also wanted to throw in the NYX Control Freak Clear. This has been a favorite of mine for like eight years. I don't even know how long it's been out, but I mean, as long as I can remember, I have loved this clear brow gel. If I were at the drugstore and it's like, or Ulta, wherever you can find NYX really, and I needed a clear brow gel, this is what I would grab. Like, it's just perfect. So, kind of going back through what we used, I mean, a lot of it I already knew how I felt, but to share my top picks, things that I really am enjoying, obviously that lip combo, I'm really, really enjoying. The mascara is up there. I need to film just like a reel or something just focused on this, because I really think it is one of the best drugstore mascara launches that has come out in a while. It, it, I mean, it's just, it's that good the day you open it. Like there's no waiting for it to dry down or anything. I was reminded of how good this Maybelline Single Shadow and Nude Glow is. Love it so much, feels so high quality. And then a lot of the other things like, you know, I'm still trying out. The Maybelline Superstay I really do think is pretty. I love that you can still do a lot of makeup with it. Sometimes with skin tints, I feel that if I put it on it tends to kind of rub away once I start adding other products on top of it. So I'll reserve those kind of products for the days where I'm just maybe putting on a skin tint and concealer, maybe a quick little eye look and nothing else because I just feel like they move around. This did not move around at all. So I feel like it can still look like full-blown makeup, but I think my skin, I think it looks really nice. So I'm excited to keep using this even more. I'm still playing with the L'Oreal True Match. I just don't love lightweight concealers like this. I like them to be a little bit tackier. So I don't know that this is ever gonna be something I full blown love, but yeah, hopefully this was a helpful or entertaining video. Maybe I just kept you company. That's cool too. Let me know how your February is going. Also, is there a drugstore product that you are absolutely loving right now? I don't care if it is brand new, if it's been around forever, maybe it's something you've loved for 10 years and you feel like no one's talking about it. Let me know in a comment below what that product is. And if you are into drugstore makeup products or videos like this, I will link my playlist. I've done this for 11 years now. <laughs> so I would love for you to stick around, hit that subscribe button, check out some more of my videos, and I love you all. I will see you in my next one. Bye. Okay, the shower is running. That's the noise you hear because I'm about to get in the shower. But it is the end of the night. Just a quick check-in because I wanted to show you. Um, I really like the skin tint from Maybelline plus the Physician's Formula powder. I feel like we had a really nice combo. The coverage stayed pretty well. The bronzer stayed a long time. The blush, I feel like, stayed as well. Um, I feel like everything stayed. Like the eyeshadow, there was no creasing. I even did a little bit of a workout today. The eyebrows, like, 
the lashes. There was no um, transfer. I will say that NYX Epic pencil liner, I do feel like wore away. It transferred just a bit more than I had experienced before. Again, I don't know if that's because I worked out and like, but I don't know. Um, and I don't feel like it's where it was. So that is the one thing I noticed that kind of, mm. you know, but generally all good.